I'm uh, honored to be here today uh, to be um, a speaker at your convocation. And uh, first, let me congratulate you uh, for finishing a very uh, demanding uh, program. Um, it is indeed demanding because uh, uh, actually quantitative trading or trading in general, uh, I would consider one of the most difficult profession to break into or to succeed in. And uh, let me quote somebody, uh, I will tell you who, uh, who, so, who, who wrote recently uh, that quantitative trading became more challenging with every passing year. Now, I didn't say that, I, and not somebody uh, who is a newbie to trading said that. None other than Dr. D. E. Shaw was quoted saying that in a book by Professor Andrew Lowe. Now, if, as you know, D. E. Shaw was one of the real early pioneers of quantitative trading and has built a multi-billion dollar, extremely profitable hedge fund in New York. He has at his hands hundreds of PhDs and millions of dollars of supercomputing power uh, at his disposal. And yet he said that even for him, quantitative trading has become more challenging with every passing year. So uh, I have no doubt also from my personal experience that that is true and no doubt it will be true for you as well. Now. Let's hold this thought for a moment in your mind. Um, why is it still worth doing it if it is so difficult? Well, I would say that it is not any more difficult, this field is not any more difficult uh, to be successful than to become a successful actor or a successful singer or model or a um, fiction writer or uh, a visual artist. All of these fields are extremely difficult to be highly successful and algorithmic trading is no, diffi no different. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that nobody should try to become an actor, nobody should try to become a fiction writer and so forth. However, one should be prepared for failure. That is what somebody who anybody who enter into any one of these professions including quantitative trading should be prepared for be prepared for failure success is an outlier especially um la huge success success like the likes of de shore renaissance technologies and those uh, uh, institutions those are true outliers do not expect them it, failure is to be expected, just like anybody going into the acting profession, for example. No, but not everybody can be uh, Brad Pitt, not everybody can be Angelina Jolie, but it doesn't stop many aspiring young people from getting into the profession. Now, therefore, my first uh, advice is if you are not already in the financial industry, uh, make sure you don't quit your day job when you uh, graduate and started your first uh, trading. Uh, building your first trading strategy. Make sure that you have at least two profitable trading strategies uh, running live for at least a period of two years before you consider doing it full time. Um, that is a thing, something from my personal experience and from the experience of many other traders. Uh, you know, a lot of times traders will be um greatly optimistic and encouraged if their strategy worked for let's say half a year and they thought that they have made it uh, well that is i can i can tell you from my personal experience that i we have hired sub advisors to our fund before where the track record the live trading track record in their personal account is such that they have no losing months consecutively for six months and we thought well that cannot be chance can it Right, you know, you know, it's, and by, by the way, his strategy is a long shot neutral market neutral strategy, so it cannot possibly be luck, right? Well, the moment we hire such an advisor, you typically start the drawdown. So, yes, it can be luck. A 
perfect track record of six months can be luck. A perfect track record of even one year can be luck. If you have a perfect track record for two years, okay, well, maybe that's a good chance that something, something, something is there. So do not be overly excited when you first start trading and you find that your strategy has worked tremendously well for six months, for a year, or even for nine months. Uh, I myself has fall, fell, fallen into that trap a bit many times before. And so one of the um, things I'm going to talk about today is, you know, what I have done wrong in the past. Hopefully that you, you will be able to avoid these pitfalls. Uh, one of the things that I've done wrong, uh, uh, an extension of being too uh, optimistic about the past performance of a strategy is that I would leverage too high. Uh, I remember one of the experience was that uh, when I was working in a proprietary trading firm as a freelance uh, trader, where I would be able to invest a small amount of money, in this case around $100,000, um, and um, would, they would be allowing you to have a buying power of maybe 10 times that, sometimes even more, depending on the risk of your portfolio. So I was trading, I think, around the... Um, uh, 2007 and 2008 with this firm, and uh, at one point, I would, at, on one particular day, I was leveraging my account a hundred times. I was trading a portfolio of more than 10 million with only hundred thousand dollars capital. But fortunately, that trade went correctly, went in the right direction, even though um, some of the managers at that firm was very unhappy with the leverage, uh, and afterwards I got a certain certainly got a earful from them. But you know it went the right way. But that is not an experience I wanted to ex to repeat. Even though it went the right way, it could easily have wiped out that uh, account equity. The other experience subsequent to that was in 2011, where I was I had just started my own uh, hedge fund the second one, um, and um, we have again a beautiful six month track record trading foreign currencies. So I was so confident that we were leveraging it to the max about 13 to 14 times. And lo and behold, the US Treasury debt downgrade hit us. The market went completely crazy in August of 2011. And we uh, had a drawdown over the next month or two of over 35% because of this high leverage. So one of the most important lessons I drew from all this is that curb your enthusiasm about your strategy. Six months of perfect track record means not very much in the financial market. It could really just be luck. It has to be very careful in distinguishing between luck and skill. And six months is not long enough for that. Uh, one year maybe is not even long enough for that. And so do not leverage too high when the performance was good. The second uh, thing that I've done wrong is related to the first one, which is that strategy performance typically is not trending. That is a mistake many uh, even sophisticated individuals make. I certainly made myself. They think that, well, you know, let's say if this strategy performs so superbly in the last two years, clearly we should allocate more capital to it in the next two years. Well, that turns out to be usually the wrong bet. What we can say is that volatility of a strategy is typically trending. So if your strategy has a volatility of 10%, chances are going forward, it will also have around 10% volatility. But if your strategy has a, a return of 10% in the last two years uh, annualized, do not expect that it will keep churning out 10% annualized in the forward year. So when you allocate capital to a strategy, typically avoid allocating based on this past performance. And that has been academic, uh, there has academic research, uh, a recent academic research has proven this point. It is not wise to expect the past return to be reproduced, although it is expected that the past volatility will be reproduced. Therefore, risk parity allocation 
is typically a better policy for asset allocation among strategies. Risk parity allocation meaning that you allocate capital to a strategy inversely proportional to its volatility, which we expect to persist going forward. The third thing I've done wrong in my uh, career in terms of trading is that I did not invest much of my profit into data, equipment, and personnel when times were good. Uh, and a lot of traders did that, especially independent traders. They think, wow, we are had a great year, so I should take out all the profit, put it in the bank. But that's not the best way to run a business. When times are good, we invest part of that profit into data, equipment, and personnel. That will yield better dividend, and that will hopefully avoid a future drawdown for you. Okay, so these are some of the things that I've done wrong. So, but what have I done right? Um, hopefully, there are some a uplifting message here as well as the the more um, depressing realities that we have to face in quantitative trading. Well, what I have done right is that I have started with simple strategies that have intuitive justification. I did not start when I've been trading my, my own money with strategies that are built based on recurrent neural network, deep learning, and so forth. No, I started with strategies that I can understand and that you know, even some of them are people have already talked about, but I have been able to improve on them by adding some bells and whistles. I advise you to start from the same. Uh, you can certainly move on to the more complicated strategy later on if you gain in, enough experience, but in the beginning, I do suggest that we stick to the tried and true simple strategy and see if they work first. At least if they fail, uh, you know exactly why it failed. It's because that single factor failed and not because of, you know, and, and you know, if when you're running a multi-factor model, you have no idea which factor failed when the project was not performing well. So that's the number one. The second thing that I did right, I believe, is that I have collaborated with many people. That is a bit unusual in the trading world where everybody try to keep their moral secret. I, on the other hand, have started out very early that I am frequently sharing my insights and my knowledge with other people. Maybe not the strategy details, but certainly more general insights. Um, I've shared with people who are, you know, of course, the more closely we collaborate, the more I share with them. My uh, partners in my fund, of course, I share everything. Everything down to the last line of code was shared within my fund with my employee. Now, I happen to know that that is also the practice in Renaissance technologies. You should not keep secrets within the firm. Otherwise, you are just shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, that's the same philosophy that Jim Simon has adopted early on in Rantech. But that is contrary to most of my experience in Wall Street and in the uh, in the institutional fund management industry. They are afraid of their own employees. Many hedge funds, their, their constant fear is that their own employee will steal their secrets and go somewhere else. Do not be afraid of that. If you're so afraid of your own employees, don't hire them. Um, the second uh, level of collaboration, are, of course, with people that um, uh, that may be uh, we are collaborating on and building strategies, but not necessarily sharing profit. And then, of course, the outer circle of collaborators are people uh, that I share knowledge with are people who are in the general public, who uh, are readers of my book, my blog, and my my students as well. And well, actually, my students are in a the third circle, the fourth circle are people who are just, you know, responding to my comments on uh, social media, on, on my web, on my blog, and so forth. So uh, there are many circles of uh, collaboration, but the general principle is that um, you should share and you should collaborate with people because you never know. You, typically, you will receive more than what you uh, give out in terms of trading secrets. And uh, that has been... Um, 
you know, one of the uh, practices that I've adopted really early on, and I'm pleased to find that some of the most successful hedge funds have found the same, except that they don't share with anybody outside of the firm. So for me, because my firm is so small, it is impossible to just share with, you know, two other people in the firm. Uh, if you have a firm like Renaissance Technologies, which are over 100 uh, PhDs, of course, you can keep it within the firm. But if you have if you are an independent trader and you are uh, or you work in a very small firm then by necessity you have to share these ideas with a wider circle as i described earlier not just with your business partners and employees and that has been crucial in uh, stimulating research on new ideas and also refining current strategy and deepening our understanding of the markets uh, and you know and so forth and it's also keep life interesting it is a very lonely life in uh, trading if you keep everything to yourself even if you're successful even if you're profitable it is not what I would want to live I would like to be able to collaborate with people and be successful and be spreading the success around that is my philosophy of trading uh, it is not just a matter of increasing the uh, number of zeros in your bank account. So with that, I don't want to bore you further. And again, congratulate you for your success in completing course and the best of luck uh, with your trading career.